Hey everybody, it's me, Zach. This is Potato, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, and I hope you all are doing so, so well. I had a lovely weekend. I hope you did too. I don't have anything exciting to say about my weekend. I did go kayaking, so do enjoy this little fun clip from my kayaking adventure. Otherwise, <laughs> my weekend was just fine, and I hope yours was too. Now, while I was enjoying my weekend, it was a busy weekend of posting for Amberlynn Reed. There have been three videos that she's posted since I have had the time to film or do anything related to my YouTube channel. So I'm going to do my best today to recap two of those videos and react to the third, all right? <laughs> We're gonna do it all! And as a general programming announcement, I have a lot coming up this week. Uh, I'm going to see New Jeans at Lollapalooza, and I also have some family coming to visit this weekend. So my time is gonna be a little bit limited when it comes to being able to film and upload and things like that. So I don't really have a, a schedule that I tell y'all about, but I think y'all have noticed that I do frequently post almost every day, Monday through Friday, most weeks, and I'm just saying in advance that that might not happen this week, just as a programming announcement. As always, I'll also have some timestamps down below so you can skip around to the part of the video that you want. That doesn't really have anything to do with my upcoming week, I just forgot to mention it when I was talking about what we are going to cover in today's video. So let's get started with the first video that I missed that I'm going to recap, and that video is posted on Friday, and it's called... Foodie Beauty lying about her weight? Reaction channels are biased and air fryer pork chops bar vlog. She immediately starts off this part of the vlog talking about her Instacart order and trying to decide what she's going to be doing with her, her diet essentially and what she's trying to figure out because she doesn't really know since she quit Weight Watchers already. And her, her brain just automatically goes to like meat and veggies is healthy. And I just noticed that like my brain, when I think of like eat healthier, goes to like meats and veggies. I don't, I don't know why. Cause I've never been the one to think that like carbs un are unhealthy, but like carbs, I'm, I'm like, I'm mad at carbs right now. <laughs> like it's not carbs fault that I'm fat, but like, Carbs and lipedema, they don't really jive very well, and I have lipedema, so I don't know. I just, I have a lot on my mind right now. I'm just... And I do find it interesting, and I'll probably talk about it a few different times today in today's video, but <laughs> I do find it interesting that she's back to caring about carbs and how they impact her lipedema. As you probably know, if you've been around for a while, she has fully ignored, well, she didn't start off ignoring what her lipedema specialist did. She, the only time she's ever done low carb in the history of her YouTube channel was when she went to a lipedema specialist and they told her that was a good way to manage her lipedema and also lose weight. And then she fully ignored that specialist when she went and talked to a different doctor and that doctor told her something else about something completely different and didn't have the thought to be like, hey, well, my lipedema specialist is saying that I should do this. What do you think about that in terms of what I'm doing here? Yada, yada, yada. And so she hasn't been doing low carb for a very long time since then. She also weirdly shows us this picture of her with a Snapchat filter and talks about how she wants it forever on her face. Y'all, why can't I just have like a forever Snapchat filter on my face? Like, look how cute. This is one of my most favorite Snapchat filters. And yeah, girl, that's possible. <laughs> Let's go get a little heart and the word baby tattooed on her face, girl. I would love that content. Please, 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 please. Please give us that content. There's also a lot of people suggesting that this is like her trying to thirst trap her way into some other girl's DMs or something like that to get a new wifey. But I just have to say nothing about my thirst has been quenched in this moment. She also shows a grocery haul and the only interesting part of the grocery haul is that she hauls potatoes. Got some potatoes. I know I was just talking about carbs, but having one potato never hurt anyone, I promise. Not only did, am I fat and 
you had to beat on my back, but like I choked on a potato and shit my pants and almost like died in front of you. Like, and it is kind of maddening to see her <laughs> all potatoes immediately following her talking about carbs being a problem for herself. Like this is the madness she's living in, like co constantly contradicting herself and justifying those contradictions however she can. But also we need to pay attention to the fact that she said the words something along the lines of like, one potato isn't gonna kill me, and then included this lovely clip of the, the choking and shitting and farting on herself or whatever moment in her life. And it is very funny to me that she's chill about using it as a punchline. She even in the next day's vlog, talks about how she can like laugh at it, think it's funny because it happened to her, so she's allowed to laugh at it. Am I fat and you had to beat on my back, but like I choked on a potato and shit my pants and almost like died in front of you, like. And I <laughs> That's funny to me because the experience happened to me, so I'm allowed to laugh about it. And I will say, I thought it was very funny that she included the clip in that moment. I did laugh, I did chuckle. I agree with her that it was funny, but it's just, interesting to me because if you recall she once upon a time got upset about me choosing to eat potatoes on my channel and to like come on here and like have a mukbang of potatoes like you are a horrible person period like you are a bad person that is what bad people do death isn't a parody someone almost dying is not a parody um, like, just imagine if I did something like that. Like, what? I can't understand the nuance that, like, it's different for her to laugh at her own experience and things like that. I also think she knows that she put that story up because it would get a response, you know? She knew that people would have a certain kind of response when she told a story about choking on a potato and pooping herself. We do get a little popsicle segment from our girly, and by a popsicle segment, I mean the popsicle stick question segment. Do you think Chantel lies about her weight? Wow, that's some tea. And I'm honestly very confused why she's answering a question about Chantal's weight. The original prompt for these <laughs> popsicle sticks was having people ask her questions about her weight loss, okay? And that's not to say that people aren't going to throw in questions like that because people are just gonna ask her whatever. But if that's the goal, why would you take the time to write down that question for yourself to answer later? Like, I am very confused because I thought this was supposed to be questions about her own weight loss. Now, all disrespect to Chantal, I think that Amber Lynn trying to clickbait titles with her name and the title is beneath Amberlynn. Amberlynn gets way more views than Chantal. Amberlynn doesn't need to bring in like petty fights and drama with Chantal. And so I am kind of curious about like what her angle is here and why she thought that that would be a cute, fun idea. And for what it's worth, I don't really care what Amberlynn thinks about whether or not Chantal is or isn't lying about her weight. I don't care if either of them are lying about their weight. I honestly, my take on Amberlynn, Chantal, or anybody on the internet lying about their weight or what their weight might be is that, like, that is their business and, like, it's only going to impact them, you know? Like, Amberlynn or Chantal lying about their weight doesn't have any <laughs> change on my life. Um, that it just is like their own Delulu land that they're living in and they can do that. But Amberlynn doesn't think that Chantal is lying about her weight in case you cared, okay? So then she has a little journaling moment and I do wanna say that I think it is a good thing that she's taking time to journal about things that she's grateful for and that she's hopeful for. Uh, I am going to emphasize that I think that that's a good thing that she's doing it and I'm glad she's doing it. I don't have a lot of commentary to add about that. I mean, I think like some of the things that she was grateful for and some of the things that she was hopeful for were kind of basic. Uh, but I'm mostly emphasizing this because sometimes people think that I don't have anything nice to say about Amberlynn, and I don't know if that's because other people are just looking for negativity too, uh, and I feel like if I don't 
emphasize that I think that this is a positive thing for her, that people are going to be like, well, Zach, you're just always nitpicking, and I'm picking out all the little things about her that you don't like, and she can't even say a word without you having a problem with it. And I don't have a problem with her journaling about things that she's grateful for and hopeful for. I will say one interesting thing she did say during this segment is that she promises that she's not being self-destructive, even if it seems like from an outsider's view that she is. And I have just been hurting so much and just feeling so sad and just like, I don't want to say self-destructive, but I'm sure from an outside <laughs> from an outside view, I look self-destructive, promise I'm not. I just want to say my outside view, as she puts it, is totally specifically informed from what she shows on her channel, right? What she's shown on her channel in recent history, but I mean like I think across the board on her channel, but in recent history, like in a post breakup world, those behaviors have seemed pretty self-destructive. Like ordering takeout on the very first day you start Weight Watchers feels a little self-destructive. And I think she even herself talked about in a video recently how she's self-sabotaging. I don't know, call it self-sabotaging, call it self-destructive, whatever you want. But like, we only feel like that as an outsider viewing you because that's what you've chosen to share with us. So yes, I am grateful that you are showing you journaling about positivity and positive things in your life. She goes on to cook some pork chops in the air fryer and I do just want to really quickly affirm Amberlynn that it is not weird or quirky to use a meat thermometer to make sure that the meat has reached the correct temperature that it's safe to eat. So I'm weird when it comes to meat as so is a large quantity of people. So I like to use a meat thermometer. <laughs> Yes, I do. She just wants to be a quirky girl so bad that she's making non-quirky things seem quirky. It's not. It's not quirky. The only thing that I'll say is quirky is that you love eating up the driest ass hockey puck looking pieces of meat in the world. All right, my pork chops are finished. Weirdly, it is literally all that I'm craving right now. So I don't feel like making anything else. Like, girl, you didn't even need that meat thermometer. It was clearly done. She, she was clearly fucking done. Toasted, roasted. We could play a game of hockey with those as the pucks. And just as a note, her DMs are open, honey. I have had a lot of people reach out to me on Instagram because my DMs are open, honey. If you need someone to talk to, I'm here. So get your wifey applications in now. She's ready. She's on the lookout. She's posting these, these filtered photos. And she's making sure you all know that you can, in fact, slip into the DMs. She also discusses how she, like, went to a bar one time and has, in fact, met friends who uh, she has outside of her relationship with wifey and or previous partners. But um, recently when I was talking about the people that I hung out with on 4th of July, I actually met them probably like a year and a half ago. I was at a bar. Yes, I was. And, and then that like ventured off and I was able to like form friendships of people that are outside of a relationship because I feel like I've always just like had friends because of my relationship or the people that were in my partner's life. I was always like in their life and a part of their life instead of them being in mine, it felt like a little bit. So it was kind of cool. Like with Feline, it wasn't like that at all. And listen, I do not like to be like, oh, Amber Lynn has been watching my videos and she's talking about something I said in a video and this at the other. A lot of people post those comments in my comments on my videos. That was redundant, sorry. A lot of people do suggest that and I don't mind people saying that, but I just personally usually try to steer clear of that because one, I don't think that I am the, the first person or only person to think a lot of the things that I think about Amberlynn. I wouldn't say that all of my opinions are, you know, completely original or, or only things that I could come up with. So it feels very conceited, I guess, 
to say that, you know, she's out here talking about me specifically because it's very possible there are other reaction channels or just people in her comments saying the same things. I do believe she watches reaction channels, myself included, but I don't necessarily always think she's just talking about me. But with all of that being said, I was literally just in a video uh, last week at some point, I don't remember which one specifically, talking about how she would have more in Kentucky because she's the one, mind you, that has said there's nothing for her in Kentucky, there's no reason for her to stay in Kentucky. And so I was suggesting at the time that if, you know, she had ever gone out and like made friends with other people outside of her partners, if she'd ever established any kind of roots outside of her partners, that there could be things for her in Kentucky. So anyways, I just find it fascinating that she's now reassuring everybody. I do in fact have friends. I do. They, they exist. They exist outside of wifey and I have so many things here in Kentucky. It's like, well, girl, if that's the case, then let's stay in Kentucky with those friends, you know what I'm saying? And then the last part of this video is really focused on her thoughts on reaction channels that she totally surely doesn't watch, including that a lot of people have been DMing her and letting her know that people have stopped watching reaction channels because of how they've handled the breakup era. So this whole like breakup era has had so many of you guys reach out to me saying that like this whole thing has made you stop watching reaction channels and I just want to say thank you. And I do find that interesting as a concept because weirdly enough my views have gone up during the breakup era like noticeably up. I've, I've definitely gotten more views on recent videos. I mean I wasn't hurting for views to begin with but like Certainly in a post-wifey world, my, my videos have gotten more views than they were getting before that. And she also talks about how, like, reaction channels have lacked sympathy and empathy and that they're poison. Not for not watching them, but for acknowledging the poison that reaction channels put inside of the community and... It's not cute, lacks sympathy, it lacks empathy, and you guys actually say it better than I do, word it better than I do. And I can only speak for myself, but I try and I strive to approach my channel with a certain level of sympathy and or empathy. And listen, I'm not perfect by any means. I think you've seen, at least recently, in a few videos that I've really been <laughs> pushed to my, my limits of my empathy and sympathy. But I would say I've tried. But I do just want to say that the reality is is that I will probably never please everyone. And that's just like a common thing. I sometimes feel like I do need to like check in and remind folks who watch my channel that like I can't possibly please everybody. And sometimes that's like directed specifically at like the the public as a whole, the public who watches my channel as a whole. But that also goes for like pleasing Amber Lid, right? Like sometimes people will weirdly say that like I'm trying to appease Amber Lid or make her feel some type of way when I do show empathy or sympathy towards her. A lot of people like think that I have some kind of like grand scheme of trying to keep Amber Lynn happy so that I can keep operating my channel or something like that. I don't, I don't really understand the logic, but it is a thing people have said. But it just like never fails that Amber Lynn always shows and proves that like I also will never be able to make her happy. Like there's never going to be a way that I would be a channel that she felt like was treating her fairly or whoever, whatever. And it is interesting because at one point during this video, she talks about how reaction channels like biasly nitpick her. Like, I feel like there comes a time where it's like, okay, are you a reaction channel truly reacting? Or are you just like biasly nitpicking and just trying to keep the money flowing by not being empathetic towards my situation, etc, etc. And I think that's interesting because this particular video came out after I had already posted my last video. And there were a few comments that literally like parroted what she was saying, like repeated it verbatim. And I do want to say that me being like nitpicky and stuff like that, that's not a new criticism. It's mostly because I do pause a lot because I 
feel like I'm gonna forget my thought if I don't say it in the moment. And I do try to get a little bit better about that and I've tried to be a little bit less like posy, nitpicky because I can't understand how that could be annoying. It is also just something like the way my mind works, I really will forget thoughts if I don't say them when I think them. That's why right now I'm like literally reading off of a an outline of things I want to say. But it's interesting that it all came on that particular video because I think the part of that reaction where I reacted to her talking about the picture of her with her brother and the poem was a little bit polarizing for some people. Like there were a number of people that thought I shouldn't have been so mean to her in general in the video because she was being vulnerable and sharing something like that, which I don't think I was really that mean to her at any point in the video. But I was, I did give her some like tough love at the end of the video regarding her breakup with wifey and like, you know, trying to achieve her dreams for herself and whoever, whatever. And I think that's because I can like see the <laughs> the nuance of like, wow, she is sharing like something very personal with her. I said actually multiple times in that video that I thought it was really sweet and touching that she had that picture of her and her brother and that she could hold on to that and things like that. But there were a lot of people who on the flip side also thought I was being too kind to her and there are a lot of people say that like, she really just included that photo and the poem as a manipulation tactic to try to make some people feel sad for her, which I don't agree with by the way. I think she was just sharing it and that's fine and she can do that. But there were people saying that. And so it's just like a good example of like, I'm never going to fully have everybody agree with everything I say. And that's something I'm very much okay with. But it all is just very funny to me then when like Amberlynn makes claims that I'm not like empathetic or sympathetic or that I'm biased or that I'm I'm extra nitpicky because there are a lot of times I do acknowledge the things that she's doing that I like, that I enjoy i.e. like that photo with her brother, i.e. like me talking about her journaling and talking about the things she's grateful for, i.e. like the other day I said I really loved her eye makeup. <laughs> like all of these things are things that I do. And it's almost as if like you're expecting me to just say like critical things that that's like sometimes what people just see or hear. And granted there are videos where like it's mostly criticism for me, those do happen. I'm just saying I do often talk about the things I like her doing as well and I guess that's just not something that people are listening for or taking note of. She does say in general that she feels like reaction channels are kicking her when she she's down, specifically says all reaction channels are kicking her when she's down, which I think is probably unfair because I think reaction channels exist on a spectrum in terms of like how they they produce content and make content and what they find interesting, what they choose to comment on, what the jokes they make, etc. Which is why there are so many and all of them have varying levels of success, right? Because not everybody enjoys the same kind of content when it comes to commentary on Amberlynn Reed. I do respect how she feels. You know, she didn't obviously name me specifically. It's not my intent to kick her when she's down, and I certainly will probably spend some time thinking about what that means to me, but all I can promise moving forward is that I'm going to continue to cover her with the same level of, like, empathy and or sympathy that I always have covered her with, or at least certainly have in recent history. Because I also have to say, like, I I feel like I am also treating this very similarly to how I treated her breakup with Becky, and I thought I was very respectful then, <laughs> and I'm being very respectful now. I don't know. I'm just gonna continue trying to do my best. So the second video I'm recapping is called The Real Reason I Didn't Get Weight Loss Surgery and My Lip Edema Pain Bar Vlog. And just as a general note at the beginning of this recap, I wanna say that I feel like we're gonna rotate through all the various diagnoses that Amber Lynn has received over the past year. I mean, she's already recently brought up her hernia in a video. She talked about her dangling lung recently in a video. 
and now we've circled back to lip edema. And obviously none of those things are gonna go away. I think she said with lip edema, for example, that that's something she'll always deal with or struggle with. But I do think it's interesting when she chooses to bring up these things. And spoiler alert, it actually only really comes up in this video because somebody asked her a question about it. But I do think it's especially interesting because we were also just talking about you know, the low carb diet and how the lipedema specialist gave her specific suggestions for things she could work on regarding that and she's done none of that. So it's just interesting to me is all I'm saying. She shares a Pinterest quote in this video that has inspired her to focus on herself. And I saw this, it says, be enough for yourself first. The rest of the world can wait. And that just like really resonated with me and I feel like it's kind of the theme of my channel right now where it's like I need to be good for me so I need to focus on myself and not other people. Which like girl whatever it takes if it's a, a Cordy Pinterest quote great but like literally this is also what I was saying in my last video like you need to do this for yourself stop doing it for your YouTube audience stop doing it for Feline. It, it doesn't matter unless you're doing it for yourself. You can be selfish about this. And thank goddess above, we have re-entered the mustard and cottage cheese era. All right, you guys, well, I cooked some turkey kielbasa with some onion. I have some raw broccoli, which I love. Some mustard, cottage cheese, and green olives with the good old garlic in the middle, which is my fave. And then we get into this place where we're answering like five, six, I don't know, I lost count how many we're doing, but we're answering multiple popsicle stick questions, which just slays me to this day because like, girl, do you not remember <laughs> that these were supposed to represent one pound loss each? Like every time she brings them out in a video, I'm just remembering that this is supposed to be the visual representation of her weight loss. And we have just thrown that shit right out the door, which is not surprising, obviously, but I'm <laughs> just like, we're really just acting like that never happened. So one of the questions she gets asked is about her lip edema. Does lip edema hurt or feel uncomfortable? So lip edema without a doubt feels uncomfortable. It feels the most uncomfortable when I've been walking a lot, standing a lot, sitting in a car for a while, or I've had like a massive amount of sodium. It doesn't hurt that much. And honestly, I don't feel like we learned that much more about her lip edema that we didn't already know, but I do find it interesting that she talks about how it actually doesn't hurt her all that often, even though she does clickbait my lip edema pain in the title of the video. And she also gets a question about what the real reason for quitting weight loss surgery was, which she first starts off talking and it's like supposedly about a lack of stability. What's the biggest reason you aren't getting weight loss surgery? Lack of stability. When you get weight loss surgery, they said you're, you're gonna need someone. You're gonna need that one person like to really, really support you. And right now with this breakup, I don't want to put Feline in that position at all. So we're blaming it on wifey now? It's wifey's fault that, that you couldn't go through with getting weight loss surgery? Like, it doesn't really make a ton of sense to me either because, you know, at the time of her ending her weight loss surgery, they hadn't broken up yet, but then we do know that in recent videos, Amber Lynn has said, really the month prior to the breakup, they had been discussing the possibility of breaking up. So it's possible that she kind of like knew that was coming and didn't want to have to deal with it. And as I was thinking all of those things, she went on to clarify like, oh yeah, wifey isn't really the true reason I, I had to give it up because you know, we were still dating then. And before anyone gets this answer twisted, no, I did not know that Feline and I were not gonna be together when I made the choice not to get weight loss surgery because at the time, it was because I knew I wasn't ready. So she wants it to be about how she wasn't ready and she's all knowing and smart and knows those things. And it's just like curious to me then why we are trying to like briefly shift the blame to wifey, you know? Cause that was your story to begin with is that you knew you weren't wet ready or whatever. And I do just want to point out that she also admits that, you know, those 12 therapy sessions that she went on and on and on and on and on and on and on about, about how much they were so helpful and changed her relationship with food and this, that, the other, they didn't actually do all that. I have 
horrible relationship with food and I knew that I wasn't changed. 12 therapy sessions did not change. 31 years of me turning to food during the hardest times of my life. And of course she didn't want to have to wait for the professionals to tell her that she wasn't ready so she just she just told them she wasn't ready. So instead of the professionals telling me mm, you're not ready I just knew I knew I wasn't ready. So why go through more heartbreak when I already knew that I wasn't ready? Which to me feels like an ego thing more than anything else because what what does it hurt to have them say you're not quite ready yet you just need more time like chill out chill out but she I just feel like is the girly that has to be right and correct about everything and so she didn't want her ego to be bruised by them telling her she didn't do enough and also mind you had been telling us here on the internet that she was ready all the way up until that point. But you know what? Now that she's proven that she wasn't ready and that we were all right about her not being ready all along, she just wants you all to forget about it and move on. A lot of you were telling me, Amberlynn, you're not ready, and you were right. So now that you are right, like, let's leave the weight loss surgery arc behind us. Maybe we'll revisit in the future. Who knows? Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's how the internet works, Amberlynn. Everybody's just gonna forget about it now and move right on. They sure will, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Somebody in the questions, in the popsicle stick questions, asked if she thought that you could lose weight by eating fast food. And of course she, she talks about, yeah, of course if you're a regular, degular, whoever, whatever person, you could lose weight on fast food, but not if you have any of these conditions. If you are suffering with PCOS, lipedema, um, hormonal issues, or any other like issue, like with your thyroid, any illness or disease, whatever, that like makes it to where losing weight is a lot harder, then obviously that plays a big role in it. But if we're talking about just like a regular, Joe Schmo, trying to lose weight. You can, without a doubt, eat fast food and still lose weight if you are counting your calories, eating below the amount that you need to maintain your body weight. And I'm mostly just including this for prosperity's sake. I also just, you know, want to remember this moment when she is later chowing down on some fast food, claiming that, you know, she could lose weight with it, when the reality is, as she has said herself, that maybe if you have lipedema, that's not something that is possible. She reminds us that she prefers wordy vlogs as opposed to dewy vlogs. So I do want to end my vlog. I'm sorry that it wasn't like eventful or whatever, but I mean, sometimes I prefer a wordy vlog versus like a dewy vlog. Which like, girl, we fucking know. <laughs> like, when was the last time there was any kind of dewy vlog on your channel? Please, girl, be serious. And she's been getting distracted by other things in her life. That's just a lot of quotation movements there. But getting distracted by other things in her life so she can't really focus on filming, allegedly. I'm just like, girl, give us something. <laughs> give us anything. Most of this video is just you answering popsicle stick questions. Like, just even show me the outside of your apartment. You know, I don't need to see what you're doing if it's like top secret and confidential, but damn girl, literally give us anything. So that's the recaps of both of the episodes you missed on the Amberlynn Reed channel. We are gonna do a brief little reaction today. Although I'm not super hopeful based on the title, I really do feel like it's going to be more popsicle stick question and answer, which Q&As famously are not my favorite kind of Amber Lynn content. I don't feel like they add a lot of new information into the storyline. It's usually her answering some kind of question that she's answered once upon a time. So they're just not my favorite. So if it's more of that, we'll see. I will say other parts of the title. Well, let me just read the title for you, shall I? So the title is Full Day of Eating. Disneyland at 400 pounds. And I haven't brushed my hair in two weeks. Bar vlog. Now, I guess really the only thing that's giving me Q&A 
questions and popsicle stick vibes is the Disneyland at 400 pounds part. I just honestly feel like that is one, a, a question that could easily come up like, do you think you could ride rides at Disneyland would easily be a weight loss related question on one of those sticks. But also, if you haven't kept up with the, the Chantal lore <laughs> right now, she has been claiming that she is going to go to Disneyland and that she's going to be able to ride all the rides and things like that. And so part of this also feels like Amber Lynn trying to, again, like clickbait some kind of like foodie beauty views or something, which again, if you missed that recap where I talked about this earlier in this video, I think it's beneath her to bring foodie booty into her video titles, but here we are. Anyways, I've talked enough and this is gonna be a long ass video, so we really should just get to get to in terms of watching and reacting to this video, shall we? Hello, hello. Hi. So I woke up a little bit ago. So I talked about my last vlog, like my nighttime routine. So my, <laughs> When I wake up routine, first she, thing I do is... If, if you watched my recap, I definitely didn't cover that, but she did, in fact, talk about her ever-exciting nighttime routine, which included taking melatonin and taking a shower. Go to the bathroom, then I take Twinkie <laughs> take out a on shit. Just like a little stroll. Let Twinkie take a in. shit. I take a quick shower. My shower is, like in the morning I feel like are a little bit quicker than the ones at night. And it's summertime and it's hot and okay. I don't like that. So I feel like I shower more like in the summer. But then okay, after work. that, after- Qu Queen of hygiene, Amberlynn Reed, love. Love to hear you taking showers. Twinkie's taken out, fed, I'm showered. I then come in here and I'll do my makeup while editing. Uh -huh. Like I'll edit a little bit, then do a little bit of makeup. Edit a little bit, then do a little bit of makeup. And while I such a, a multitasking quirky queen, we love it. Usually doing my makeup part, I'm watching something on YouTube, and right now I'm listening to Beauty Beauty. Yes, I still <laughs> watch her videos. It is what it is, you know. Like I'm a viewer, and right now they're talking about like the whole Disneyland thing. A lot of people are saying, <laughs> why, 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 why is she so um, like I don't know. Her relationship with Chantal is just. Just fascinating to me. I'd be curious, actually, if anything, to have more insight on why she still watches Chantal, because Chantal has said a lot of shit about Amberlynn. I mean, I'm not going to knock Amberlynn for still watching, because I still tune in to Chantal every once in a while, because I'm fascinated by the train wreck that is Foodie Beauty, Flobby Bobby, Big Beautiful Me, The Daily Chantal, Chantal Show, Chantal Period, Chantal Al Rafe, whoever, whatever. I I am also entranced by the train wreck, but I do find it interesting that Amber Lynn watches, and I would like to know a more specific reason for why. But yes, here's here comes the Disneyland conversation. And like how she won't be able to fit on rides, yeah. yada yada. So I wanna make it very well known. The reason why I'm talking about this is because like based on experience and also I don't want bigger people to be like watching Beauty Beauty and hear, hearing all the haters say like, oh my God, you can't fit on the rides. Like, and then them never going because she can fit on the rides. I actually have been to Disneyland three times, what? and it was all while I was over 400 pounds. Yes, over 400 pounds. And every ride on Disneyland that I went on, I was able to fit on. And I also went to California Adventures, which is right across from Disneyland. Okay. And I also could fit on every single ride on that one as well that I chose to go on. I am talking Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, I'm just going to name a bunch of random ones. I mean, I mean, <laughs> name, name away, name away. I think, like, from what I've seen of the discourse and conversation is that, you know, a lot of it is not even just, like, how much you weigh, but, like, how your, uh, you know, body fat is distributed and things like this. And I'm also, I guess, you know, we want to talk about personal experience, I also am a larger human, okay, in many ways. One, I'm tall, I'm six foot two. I know that's always surprising when I share that on the internet with people. But two, like, I carry a lot of my weight in my belly. For those of you that like to tell me in my comments whenever you see my belly, I'm, I'm very aware that that's where I carry a lot of my weight. And that's always been my concern in riding roller coasters. I'm a big fan of roller coasters, love theme parks. 
but like sometimes the way that the harnesses and like the devices are built, it's like sometimes I feel questionable just getting in. And obviously I carry my weight in very different ways than Amberlynn and Chantal and or I'm not even nearly as big as either of them, okay? If I have that worry, I think it's reasonable and, and the most like not fat shaming kind of way to say that it's a reasonable thing that I think if you are a plus size person going to a theme park, you should consider, you know, I don't know if Chantal or Amberlynn or whoever, whatever could fit in the rides, but I think it's reasonable that that's a concern that people would have. And I certainly think it's reasonable specifically for Chantal. Yeah, I just don't want people to like be watching that and like <laughs> listen to the haters and like think to themselves, oh my god, I'm never gonna go to Disneyland. Sure. Trust Disneyland like doesn't discriminate <laughs> like at all. Their rides are made for all different types of people, sure. including bigger bodies. So I, I would... just wanna say here from experience that Chantel Beauty Beauty, her dream is to go to Disneyland, let her do it. She you know, I might actually like look into this uh, because I'm not like doubting Amber Lynn's experience or anything like that, but it's also obviously been a while since Amber Lynn's been there. I'd be curious because I'm sure there are people that are doing it. I'm sure there's like plus size influencers who are going to Disney World, Disneyland, etc and sharing their experiences there. That's what I would be more interested to hear. So maybe I'll seek some of that out. Uh, just because I am curious. I'm certainly not gonna take Amberlynn or Chantal to be an expert here. Uh, I'm glad Amberlynn had positive experiences there when she was younger, but like realistically, Amberlynn hasn't done anything like that in, in recent years. And I'm also even thinking, I need to go back to the struggles of being me video. If you don't know, she did a series called Struggles of Being Me. And I swear in one of those videos, she talked about her concerns about riding on roller coasters. So I might go look up that too. And if I find her talking about that, I'll include the clip. Number three is I can't ride rides at amusement parks. That's pretty obvious. I feel like also, um, I'm bigger. I can't experience, you know, fun things. I'm 27 years old. I want to be able to experience certain things in life and I just can't because of my weight. My weight literally stops me from doing things like riding roller coasters. Although I have rode roller coasters before. This was at Disneyland and I was around 420 pounds then. So that's about 90 pounds lighter than I am now. Um, but I'm talking about, you know, rides at like Six Flags or like King's Dominion or um, fairs. I can't, I, I can't fit in any of that. She is going to fit on the rides. If I was able to, she's going to be able to. I just feel like there needs to be a voice of reason. And since, you know, been there, done that. I just felt like I needed to share my story that I had a lot of fun at Disneyland. So I think being a voice of reason is saying, okay, go Chantal if you want, but just be mindful. You might not be able to do all of the things you want to do. I also think the other thing that people are generally concerned about when it comes to Chantal navigating a place like Disney World or Disneyland is that girly like struggles to get around her apartment, let alone like trekking around a large theme park such as Disneyland and Disney World. And that's not to say that they don't have like mobility scooters and stuff like that that she could rent while she's there. I'm just saying like there are lots of things that people are concerned about. And so far from what I've watched, the most Chantal's even talked about planning for this trip is all of the places she's going to go and eat. Okay, so... <laughs> So Disneyland for her right now is just like, what places can I go and eat? All right, just so we're all on the same page there. I think she will too. I'm having a hard time today, adulting if you will. <laughs> right now I'm doing some dishes and I just feel uh -huh. sad. Okay. <laughs> uh, last night, Feline and I had like, Let me pull out the sympathy bone. I, I did just get done saying in the recap that I was going to try to be sympathetic. <laughs> I really was. Uh, I, 
You know what? I've related. I've been there. I've been there when it's been hard to want to do the dishes. In fact, I finally made myself do the dishes that were... Well, I say finally. It'd been like a day. <laughs> but I made myself do the dishes that were sitting in my sink after I went and had a couple drinks with my friends last night because I came home and I was just like... Zach, you could do better than this. You could do this. And so I put all my dishes in the dishwasher. So I've been there, bestie. I could relate. It's Life is hard. Life is hard. Now tell me more about you and wifey. Kind of like, I want to say it was a serious conversation. I mean, some serious topics were definitely brought up. Like about when we're moving and uh, stuff let's like get that. To. Um, but it was like a short conversation. So there wasn't like no hardcore depth to it. So... That's definitely something that's been weighing on my mind and it's like stressing me out like to the extreme. Somebody somebody told me that it was unreasonable for me to suggest that she could leave her lease early and move out now. But I just want to say, because they were like, Zach, you've never rented an apartment. Do you not understand how this works? I've rented several apartments, okay? I do understand how this works. You can, in fact, get a subletter and or, in fact, like, break your lease if absolutely necessary. Like, people have things come up like this in their life all the time, and thus there are ways to get around a lease. And certainly Amber Lynn could afford probably whatever fees would come with breaking her lease, and or also, like, if she just put in a little effort, I'm sure she could find someone to take over her lease for her. But we all know that those are just things that she is incapable of putting effort and time into. Because... I just don't feel like I'm healing from this the right way. I don't know. I agree. I just, no other heartbreak has ever felt like this. It's just, something just doesn't, I don't know, it just well, doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel right. I do, I do disagree there because there have been plenty of people on, on the YouTubies at this point who have documented how similar the way you talk about this breakup has been to your breakups with Destiny and, and Becky all on YouTube. So, I don't know, girl. Um, people were asking about um, why do I dry my dishes in the dishwasher? It seems like that takes up more time. I don't know how it would because literally like in the same way people wash their dishes and then set it on like a dish rack. I don't think it's, I don't think it's taking more time or like more time than what you're saying here. Like if you just set it in a dish rack instead of the dishwasher, I think what people are saying is it could take less time if you just put them all in the dishwasher to begin with and ran the dishwasher. It's just that it's taking place of a dish rack because I didn't want my island to like be filled with <laughs> clean dishes on a dish rack. That ain't cute. That's not aesthetic. So I mainly do it just for, forget functionality. It's all about aesthetic for Amber Lynn Reed. Alright, girl, live your life. For the reason of like I don't want clutter. Um, so yeah. I think today is a no makeup type of deal. A no makeup type of deal. I'm having some leftovers from last okay. night. Okay. Oh the kielbasa. My kielbasa. Work. I might also have some cottage cheese, mustard. I love a raw broccoli with it, so I'm probably gonna do that. Guys, okay, so I already warmed my kielbasa. Here are my mm. raw broccoli. I'm just gonna put this all in the same bowl. Yeah. Of course, cottage cheese. Uh, oh, of I promise course. you this is good. Like, I know it's weird. God. <laughs> Trust me. I'm dying that she just plopped the cottage cheese right on top of the broccoli. All right, go off, girly. Feels weird, but it's so good. And delicious mustard. I fucking hate I can't have yellow mustard. Of that. I hate it so, so much. My meal. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Every time I look in the viewfinder, it literally just reminds me, girl, brush your hair. <laughs> like I haven't brushed my hair in probably like two weeks. All right, it's been it's been a while, but say it with me, folks. Say say it with me, folks. You look the same as you always do, bestie. <laughs> Merch available down below. You know, I shower every day, but then I probably wash my hair like every three days. Uh -huh. And then even while it's wet, I'll just put it back up into this 
And I, for me, like... I so am so curious about the concept of never brushing your hair, especially as my hair gets longer and longer. Like, I don't have a brush yet. I, I might invest in one soon, but I do comb my hair with, like, just a comb regularly. If I ever, like, don't... Or like if I wake up and I don't get immediately to it, <laughs> then later in the day I'm like, why is my hair so, so ratty? And it's like annoying and it looks bad. I just like live, live your life, I guess. But I, that has to be a mess. That hair has to be a mess. It also, I will say, doesn't actually look any different. So I, I, you at least have that going for you. It doesn't look any different than it normally does when you, you know, are out here on your channel. I know I'm like super sad because brushing my hair always goes first always well then I'm let's using, let's get um, to the little lip balm things wait like, here's um, here's also the thing is like i'm glad that you have that self-awareness but that's always the thing with amber lynn she can be very self-aware of all of these things and do nothing with that information you're literally sitting here telling us right now that you you know when you're sad that that's one of the first things to go but you could be saying that and then being like, well, let me go do it now. Like, I'm worth this. I deserve this. I deserve to take care of my hair. I deserve to take care of my body. Let me go do this now while I'm thinking about it, you know? The Dollar Tree. And there are some people who were like speaking about how like how I got really cheap makeup off of Timu, but then like, why did I get cheap makeup off of, or from the Dollar Tree? Completely different. LA Colors is an actual, <laughs> Name brand. brand. Just like when wild. Name, name brand. Name brand alert. Name brand alert. Whenever I react to Dollar Tree hauls on Twitch and the girlies, because that's the big thing for the Dollar Tree haul divas, they always love to point out when they get a name brand at the Dollar Trees. Every time they do, I sing that song. Name brand alert. Name brand alert. Do 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 Like those are actual brands that people Actual like, brands. And they were made for people who like don't have a lot of money but still want to like wear makeup and stuff. So August 1st is coming up and that's actually when oh. this planner starts. Oh. Um, I got this planner from- Wait, wait, what happened to the planner I picked? Oh wait, no, that's a planner, not a journal. I was like, is she already giving up on the journal that I championed? that I wanted to win the tournament. But no, this is a planner. This is a plan. That's completely different. I forgot. I'm sorry. Okay, it starts on August 1st. Let's go. Um, was it Marshalls? I think so. Um, and this is when it starts. It starts on the good old August. So I'm super excited. Work. Um, I love jotting down notes, lists, goals. Love. It's just what I it's do. It's a big hobby of mine. I'm just very much a pen to paper type of girly. No, no, you are a pen to paper type of girly because you're really a a fingers to notes app to pen to paper kind of girly. I think we've established that you love to you love to journal on your on your your keyboard first. So that's why when people are like, "Oh my God, you're already journaling like on your notes. Why are you also doing it like?" in a notebook uh -huh. because I want that physical like pen to paper <sighs> journal like feel to it like Work. I love it if Work. I had to choose between only journaling um electronically or like with an actual just notebook uh -huh. I would choose this this is what I would choose same thing it, it goes to like reading books honestly so like, what? it all really fucking checks out that she she just wants to make everything more complicated than it has to be that's every aspect of her life <laughs> Every, every aspect of her life is, how can I make this simple task far more complicated than necessary? And I love that for her. Why don't you just read on the Kindle or whatever? And it's like, I got the Kindle and I was thinking about it. But as I use the Kindle, it's like, yeah, it's cool and all, but I prefer just like physical. I don't know. I'm not a boomer. I promise. I am a millennial. <laughs> But it's like technology is taking over everywhere. So it's like, I still like to keep certain things from the past. Cool. Like physical pens, physical paper, sure. physical uh, books. So I don't know. Nami over here making turkey kielbasa with garlic and onion. Oh, she's- For the she, second night in a row. She's back, at, back in her eating the same thing for every meal era. Love it, love. Oh my God, it's just so good. I'm currently cooking. <laughs> oh, the old popsicle gnawing is back. It's back, besties. 
cover your eyes and ears if it bothers you. I'll let you know when we've made it to the other side. Yep. I'm also listening to Trisha Paytas's uh, new podcast, Just Trish, so... Okay. I'm gonna pause right now, though. Uh, please, girl, stop. We'll please. I mean, I like it so far. But how many podcasts has she had now? A lot. <laughs> okay. See, that's what I'm talking and they're, about. And they're successful. <laughs> like, I'm not a Trisha Paytas stan or anything. Uh, I, I don't really care for her as a concept, but... But, like, I don't know why you're criticizing her. They all get way more views than, than your YouTube channel gets. Like, if if there was a demand from somebody for them, then I don't think that they would keep happening. What talking about? Just don't give up. Just keep on trying, no matter how many... Oh, I see what the point is. You go on. I'm blurry. I, so, I see what her point is now. She's saying, like, oh, if Trisha Paytas can keep making podcast after podcast after podcast, then let that be a sign to not give up. I gotcha. We're on the same page now. My food is done. I wish, like, I had rice or something, but I really am trying not to have, like, pasta and rice. Okay. You got potatoes. <laughs> No, one step at a time. You got I'm potatoes. I'm this because I have leftovers for the next day. As you guys saw, I ate my leftovers from last night earlier. So so far, I've shown you guys everything that I've ate today so far. Hello, hello. Hi. Okay, I haven't vlogged for I think it's been like three hours at this point. And okay. I want to say about an hour ago, I was just like having a meltdown. You guys have been so sweet in my DMs. Like, so many people reaching out to me saying, like, how I just seem so relatable because these are, like, feelings that people usually don't voice out loud and, like, people just saying thank you for your vulnerability and stuff, and it just makes me want to, like... I mean, uh... Hmm. <laughs> Hmm, uh, finding my finding my sympathy bone. Where where is it at? Where where is she at? I just don't understand how how. I mean, no disrespect to those people. Truly, no disrespect. I'm I'm just curious how Berlin is relatable in this situation. Not to say that like her feelings surrounding her breakup aren't real, but like. If I was also going through that situation, which I'm not, which is maybe why I don't find it relatable, but if I was going through that situation, you know, I don't know that Amber Lynn would be the person I would look at because Amber Lynn, even if you just look at like Amber Lynn as a YouTuber who's like her one job is doing YouTube, she's not relatable in the sense that she's just sitting around all day constantly thinking about this breakup and how many people who are going through breakups is that like their actual lived experience and and things like that i mean that's not to say that you couldn't connect with some of the things that she's saying or feel some of those things by any means but if i was like trying to find somebody relatable that understood kind of like what i was going through you know i don't know that it's Amber Lynn, or, or certainly I wouldn't take her as, like, an example of how to deal with and process these emotions. I would just, I guess to those people, I would just say dream bigger, <laughs> like, aspire to more, you know? I don't know, cry, like, I wish I could hug every single one of you, because so many of you are also opening up to me, and it's just like... I'm glad you all have wow. each other. So, I also want to say um, that the person who sent me this book, because this was from one of my P.O. boxes recently, said that on the inside, there was a letter, uh and that the person... <laughs> who wrote this book actually wrote inside of it and signed it and I hadn't actually opened the book yet <laughs> wow so she messaged me I was like oh my god things I'm not surprised by that Amber Lynn missed that honestly mostly because I don't anticipate that Amber Lynn will read that book just like I don't anticipate that Amber Lynn will read any of the books that she has um received in her P.O. box Thank you for letting me know. So I just want to say, Tracy, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. And you guys have just been 
So kind. Oh, I good. I'm, I'm, I'm it glad to hear the positivity. Going through a lot. There's a lot of things I'm vocalizing and a lot of things I'm not ready to vocalize, but we will get there. So I was in my pantry and I saw that I had like, I don't know, I'd say maybe 40% of this left. So I just ate them right after saying I'm trying to watch my carbs. <sighs> they were just staring at me in my face. They were really tasty, but no more buying these because this is like, honestly, probably one of my favorite snacks in the world. Not good for you. <sighs> this is this is that piece that I was saying, not about food earlier, but about self-awareness, about how like she can be so self-aware of like things she needs to do or things about herself or I don't know, any various thing and then is completely incapable of acting on any of it. And it really isn't just with food, as I pointed out earlier with the hair brushing, but in this case with food, she she can sit there and be like, I know I want to limit my carbs because it doesn't help with the lipedema. And yet here we are. My hair is staying frizzy, I swear to you. It's probably because I'm not brushing it. <laughs> I was literally just about to say, girly, you just started this video off saying you haven't brushed your hair in two weeks. I need to do. Mmm. So good. <laughs> when I like something, you know it, because I'm like, so good. Oh, I'm aware. I'm aware. Really not descriptive at all. <laughs> exactly. So I know it feels like I was showing you guys like wannabe Legos and Legos that I was completing almost every single day. I've still been working on them. Yes, I have. Oh, I want to show you guys every completed one that I do because I just love it so much. I'm good. And I know a lot of you do too. We'll just skip this over this. So yeah, this is the end of my video, but this was definitely oh. like a what I ate today video because I showed you every single thing that I put in my mouth besides Here we are. the liquids I had and the only thing I've had today was a few of these Diet Pepsi. A few? We gotta have one more. I usually have one more like while I'm just chilling in bed. Girl, you are, you got to be dehydrated. Did you drink water? You drank four Diet Sodies today? Listen, I love a Diet Sodi. I really do. I will never try to take Diet Sodi away from anybody. But damn, okay, come on, a few diet sodies and one more on the way, work. So, so that is the end of this vlog. I hope that you guys did enjoy. Um, today was day 10 or 11. I, I think, I think it's 11. Today 10, today's 11. I think we're at 11. Oops. I'll see you guys in the next one. Which, time. thank Bye, God. Honestly, thank God we're, we're almost done. I, I honestly am very much ready for the 15 days to be over, truly. Truly, truly, truly. Anyways, what an extra long video for y'all today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. We covered so much. We covered a whole lot of ground today. So I hope you all enjoyed it. If you're brand new to my channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Hit the bell button so you get a notification every single time I post a new video. Make sure to leave me a comment, hit like, click share, and follow me on all of my social media. I love you all so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!